What is it like to be in a meeting with Jerry Jones after a loss, Jason? What is that like? Oh, he, he, Jerry Jones is—he's a fascinating guy. Uh, yes, you, he you is. Don't have the that, you don't have the success that he's had throughout his life, and really everything he's touched. Uh, he, he has amazing, uh, amazing abilities. He has amazing wisdom and intelligence about so many different topics. And uh, you, you know, I would say uh, he was incredible uh, after losses. He was incredible, uh, you know, when times were tough. Uh, his support for coaches and for players and, you know, when the football part of it was tough or, or things in your individual life were challenging, their depths and those kinds of things. I mean, he, he was incredible. And, I, and I, I saw the examples through the years when I was playing there, when I was coaching there, when things like that happened for me. You know, I felt it personally. So, um, you know, there, there's a perception about Jerry Jones, and I think some of it from the outside might be accurate. Uh, but there are a lot of stuff uh, he's portrayed in a certain way uh, that, that I, I simply don't agree with. And uh, very fortunate to have the opportunity to have played uh, for him and to coach for him for many years. And uh, he's really made my life better. So I got nothing but great things to say about Jerry Jones. No, no and, I, and I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not fishing for you to say something negative about him, Jason. Just so I can stipulate that, you know, I, it's just it, it is a fast. You said he's incredible, and he is fascinating. It just there's the general sense in Dallas that after all this time that he'll put his finger in the pot in a way that he should not uh, that might run detrimental to the to the ultimate success of this team. And uh, that's 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 what I'm trying to, you know, dive into here, having you having had all that time with him, you know. Yeah, he was always so supportive. He always wanted to do what was necessary to win. And and I always felt like. I didn't do a good enough job communicating, you know, what we needed to do if there was a decision made that was against some of the things that I wanted to do, whether it was hiring someone or drafting someone or signing someone or make, making a decision about personnel or how we're doing things. And uh, to me, it's the coach's job in any organization to create the vision for what you want the team and the program to be. Mm. And it's your job to lead, and it's your job to lead upward to ownership to general managers and certainly lead to your coaches and to your players and all the staff members who work with the team. So anytime something didn't go in a direction that I felt like maybe we should have done it this way, I always put it back on myself to say, clearly I didn't communicate that well enough. I didn't make the argument, the, the, the argument well enough to, to get the decision or the outcome that we wanted. Uh, it's a very collaborative organization. There's a lot of people. You have a lot of conversations about the decisions you want to make. Ultimately, Jerry is the owner, general manager. He makes the decisions. He's the one who drafts the player. But, but I always felt like when we did a good job, when I did a good job communicating the vision, communicating the reason why we wanted this particular guy, and we created consensus throughout the organization, that's when we did our best work. And, uh, and any time – we fell short of that. I put it back on myself for not doing my job well enough. 